This is a $99 macro lens. And in this video, I'm going to see if a $99 lens is any good. And to do that, I'm going to photograph the most expensive vintage lens I've ever purchased. Pretentious enough for you? Come on, admit it, you're curious. $99 lens. This is the TT Artisan Manual 40mm f2.8 macro lens, a modern macro lens available for Sony E, Fujifilm X, Nikon Z, Canon EFM, and RF, as well as Micro Four Thirds camera mounts. And today we'll be using it on my Sony A7S II, which is a full frame sensor, so unless I shoot in the APS-C crop mode, this lens won't cover the full image circle, and I'll get this fun little vignetting on the edges. Now I do want to be fully transparent here and say that I was sent this lens for review. I didn't pay anything for it, so obviously that will compromise my opinion slightly in the eyes of many. Now that said, the thoughts on this lens are entirely my own based on my own experience using it. Hopefully the results will speak for themselves and can give you an informed idea on how the lens performs. Comment section for further questions if necessary. All right, let's get into the lens specs. The TT Artisan 40mm f2.8 macro lens is for the APS-C sensor offering a one-to-one -one magnification radio, radio, ratio. It's got an f-stop range between f2.8 to f16 and has an 11 blade diaphragm which allows for nice round bokeh in the highlights across the f-stop range. Now the front filter size is 52 millimeters and offers a close focusing distance of 0.17 meters. An optical design of eight elements in seven groups helps shape the light into roughly a 40 degree angle of view on an APS-C sensor. Now the physical lens itself has an all metal build and glass with a very smooth mechanical focus throw of about 220 degrees. Now it does have an external focus, which means as you focus close to the minimum focus, the lens telescopes out. As you do that, it actually has markings on the lens that shows the magnification ratio, um, which I actually quite like. And the markings on the lens are in both feet and meters. They're nicely engraved and easy to read. The aperture ring itself is smooth in operation with half stop clicks with room between so you can actually dial in very small adjustments, almost as if the uh, aperture is declicked. Now I do want to linger on the fact that this is a $99 lens, but considering it is quite affordable, the image it produces are actually pretty great. Well, images and video, because I, I do both. Now macro photography generally is really tricky with autofocus, so the fact that this is a manual lens doesn't really hurt it in any way in my opinion. Now, photographing subjects close up like this is oftentimes quite deliberate and intentional. And as such, having full control over the focus could save you loads of time waiting for that autofocus to find its mark, only to miss it and miss it and miss it again. Now, another great thing about macro lenses is that you don't have to use them exclusively for macro. You can use one for just about anything. And you're not just limited to the extreme close-ups, which makes it quite versatile. Not surprising it being a modern lens, the colors are quite good and are obviously subject to whatever color profile you're shooting with your camera. And you can also do a lot in post-processing, especially when shooting raw. Now the lens is sharp, even wide open at f2.8, which given the super close focus distance can really blur out that background into oblivion. Now when shooting macro, I do like to have a bit wider focus depth, so I like to stop down to at least f4 or 5.6, depending on the angle and position of the subject, to keep it mostly in focus. Now, aberrations are almost, almost non-existent, even wide open. I can't seem to find any, even in high contrast conditions. Not bad. Macro lenses do tend to all have a recessed front element like this to minimize the impact of flaring. But if you want flares, you'll have to shoot almost directly into the light for some interesting results. And one of the coolest things about this lens is that it definitely has all of the elements I've grown to appreciate using old SLR lenses. The all metal build, manual mechanical focus system, and affordability. Plus it comes with the added bonus of having new optics and comes natively mounted to whatever mirrorless camera system you're using, removing the need for adapters. And it comes in a pretty cool box. People like to unbox things. This box isn't bad. To get a box on an old lens, you're paying like a huge premium for that. Especially that one. 
You also don't have to worry about age-related issues like fungus or mold compromising the optics, or oil on the aperture blades, or having to re-grease the focus or aperture to get that smooth focus throw. Now, best of all, the price won't go up over time due to scarcity, which is something we're seeing a lot of now in the vintage markets. Now, for me, of course, shooting with vintage lenses is much more than cost, so much more than that, but that's also a very personal sentiment. I actually had a great experience using this lens over the past couple of months, and if you are someone who appreciates affordable macro photography and don't mind a fully manual experience, this lens uh, might be one you wanna check out. In conclusion, I wanna hear from you guys. How did this $99 lens perform? Let me know below what you think. Thanks as all for watching, of course, and we will see you next time. Oh, feels good to be done. I'm gonna riff a bit. Well, I'd say after a few months using it, I would say it's a pretty, 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 pretty guy. <gasps> oh, yeah.